Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we moved to Honey Springs, Oklahoma on July 17, 1863. Union Major General James G. Blunt, a fully trained and certified doctor who practiced medicine in New Madison, Ohio in 1849, was commanding 3,000 men from the District of the Frontier. Against him was assembled Confederate General Douglas H. Cooper, an avowed expansionist for slavery before the war, but who after the war unexpectedly committed to the support of the Choctaw and Chickasaw land claim the tribes had sued the federal government for. Cooper, along with Brigadier General William Cabell, a West Point graduate and 12-year Union Army veteran before joining the Confederacy, were leading 6,000 men of the 1st Brigade Native American troops. The winner today, the Union Army. Both the Union and Confederate command believed the West could be won. And in anticipation of that, Generals Cooper and Cabell were sent out with approximately 6,000 men to guard Honey Springs. Meanwhile, Union Command had dispatched General Blunt and his 3,000 men from Arkansas. They were comprised of troops from the Wisconsin, Colorado, Kansas, and Indian Territories, including three regiments of Indian Home Guard and the 1st Kansas Colored Regiment, an all-black unit we have covered previously. By July 11th, the Union troops had arrived at the Arkansas River, and the flooding meant the Union troops began to build boats to cross the river to try and avoid a long delay. On July 15th and 16th, Blunt's men crossed the river and met up with Confederate pickets, quickly chasing them off as they began moving on Honey Springs. Confederate command had arrayed their troops on both sides of the Texas Road, placed firmly with the Elk Creek behind them and the artillery in the center. The purpose was to protect the bridge that crossed the creek. While the Confederates had almost doubled the troops of the Union, they were equipped with inferior weapons and powder. This would have a calamitous effect on their performance. Blunt's men arrived at 10 a.m. on July 17th, extending their attack across the Thousand Yard Line. Initially, Union artillery knocked out a significant portion of the Confederate artillery. A few hours into the fight, Blunt ordered his first Kansas colored to charge the artillery position. The Confederates leveled the deadly fire on the Union troops, killing the colonel in charge. However, the Union first canvas withdrew in an orderly fashion and settled into new defenses. Two hours later, the Union's second Indian home guards, comprised of Quapaw, Osage, Delaware, Seminole, and Cree, accidentally found themselves in the middle of between both sides. Realizing where they were, the Union officer in charge barked at the men to back up into their Union trenches. The Confederates, thinking the Union were retreating, charged headlong after the Native Guard, only to find a 1st Kansas Colored Regiment waiting for them. The 1st Kansas unloaded into the Confederates, blasting them back, eventually breaking a Confederate troop's charge. Confederate General Cooper knew the fight was over and began an ordered retreat, which unfortunately was bombarded constantly by the 1st Kansas, resulting in the Confederate troops taking even more losses. Considering 9,000 men engaged in close combat, the losses were light. While the highest lost estimate ranges to be more than 200 killed, wounded, or missing for the Union, and more than 500 for the Confederates, the more conservative estimates, however, are around 77 Union killed, wounded, or missing, with 134 Confederates suffering the same way. This was the largest battle fought in Indian territories, with some experts claiming this was on the same level as Gettysburg. This signaled the crumbling losses the Confederates had suffered in the West for the rest of the war. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.